right, guys. In the last video, we talked a little bit about how to arrange your workflow, and we we talked a little bit about how to edit MIDI clips in your arrangement view. Well, this time we're going to be talking a little bit. We're going to go a little bit more in depth with this, but we're also going to go into MIDI a little bit more. So I'm going to right click here and click Insert MIDI Track. We can also do uh, press Shift Command uh, T to bring in a MIDI track. Um, whichever way you prefer. Uh, I uh, This is my default MIDI track, so I have this set to uh, a specific uh, setting. I have a uh, instance of Serum and a couple of plugins here. And to do that is uh, you can create a MIDI track and then add whatever you want to it. So for instance, I for this MIDI track, I put a Serum compressor and EQ and a phase inversion plugin. Uh, I have that as my default. To get that as your default, you can right click on that MIDI channel and then go to save as default MIDI track. And that will, every single time you create a new MIDI track, this will pop up. But for this instance, we're not gonna use that. So I'm gonna delete those. And we can go over here to our instruments. Now these are all of the devices that Ableton has that allow us to create sound. Um, it, it, there are different types of instruments here. We have analog, collusion, drum rack, all the rest. We're going to get into more of those in depth, but right now we're just going to uh, focus on just getting the sounds into Ableton. So um, right here I've, I have this uh, menu. I clicked on operator, but we can click on any of these. Actually, let's click on wavetable. So there's all of these different types of sounds that we can go into, and we can go grab one of these. We could flip through a few of them. Pretty good ones. Um, you'll notice here uh, there are some that uh, looks like there's just a box with a line up at the top, but then there's some with the box with two with a line in the center. This is a uh, an instrument rack. So it's the main instrument is the uh, is the focal point, but there are attached effects to it with macro knobs. So if we look at this, there is uh, it looks like. There's a, uh, a chord plugin and a compressor and echo and a couple of other things um, with macro knobs. So this is a this is a more complex version of just the uh, of just the synthesizer. And then there's the uh, the just the synthesizer itself. So we can uh, you saw that I just double clicked this and it just popped into the channel. We can also click and drag onto the MIDI channel like that and we'll, it will come up or we can just click and drag down here and we'll do the same thing. There's a lot of ways to get uh, to get there. So we, we dragged our sound in here. This is what it sounds like. So let's create a MIDI track or MIDI clip, excuse me. So I'm going to highlight a whole section. I want this to be a two bar MIDI clip. So I'm going to press shift command M Oh, I can also right click on that space and go to insert MIDI clip. These are both of the same way to uh, two ways to do the same thing, but we can't write MIDI information without a MIDI clip. We need to make sure that our uh, we need to we need to have a place to put our MIDI notes. So that's why we create the MIDI clip. So right over here to create an uh, to click in a note, we can just double click on the space right there, or we can uh, press B to get our pen tool and draw out notes like that. I can draw a note here and here and here and here and here and do all that. So I'm gonna get rid of the pen tool here. And I'm just gonna and I'll make a little pattern. Um, I, uh, the way I, I got all those notes just like that, I, I selected all of them just, but, and I made sure to go all the way out to the, uh, where you see where it says the two right there. I wanted to make sure I grab that whole space and then I press command D just like we were talking about earlier with, uh, selecting and duplicating audio clips. We're going to it the same principle applies here in our MIDI clip. And notice I have our loop on, so we can uh, keep cycling through the this MIDI progression. 
So let's say that I don't like this sound anymore, which I kind of don't. I think it's kind of lame. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to this hot swap mode. And this will allow me to audition a couple of different sounds. Now, uh, I want to hear this as it's playing. So I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to turn off our audition mode so we can't hear the new sound. And we're just going to hit play. We're going to hit hot swap mode. And I'm just going to click over here. And I'm, I can use the arrow keys to s cycle through them and press enter to, to swap them out. Kind of like that one the best. So uh, so that's a way to, to swap out sounds, maybe audition a couple of different sounds if you have a, a couple of different presets or in, in you know in your instrument rack, so some sounds that you made during a sound design day or something. This is a, uh, this is a good way to audition new sounds. So uh, another thing we can go through, we can come up here to the uh, simpler. So say we have an audio clip, but we want it to be triggered at a certain uh, a certain tone or timbre we can come up here to a simpler and we'll do the same thing this is our this is ableton's uh way of uh clip launching at different uh uh different pitches so we'll come up here we'll create a new mini track just command uh shift command m and i'll just do something simple here i'll do c3 now we'll just do eighth notes I think those are 16th notes, actually. No, those are 8th notes. Okay. And we'll come up here to our Essentials folder. We'll turn on our Audition button and see if it sounds. And we can drop that in there. And notice I when I, I press Command-A to select all of these, and then I held Shift and use the arrow keys to shift it down an octave or up an octave. And I can also adjust the length of them by holding shift and using the arrow key right. Or shrink them back using the left arrow key. Something else to keep in mind too when you're using the simpler is uh, whatever you drop in here, Ableton will assume that whatever, uh, whatever sound you put in here is already tuned to the note C or C3 to be exact. So, I mean, the octave doesn't matter because we can shift the octave pretty easily and and follow along that way. But let's say that our that this thing was in E. So, if we look here, uh, and our and if it's if it if our note is tuned to E and we put it in, we wrote and we drew a bunch of C notes. It's going to play an E at a C note. And if that's confusing, I completely understand. But uh what we want to get is from uh, E down to C. So uh, wherever we, whatever we draw in here, it, we can follow along and make sure that you know we're applying our music theory, and it, so it's not confusing essentially. So uh, the E notes up here, so we, uh, and we have to get down to C. So that's one, two, three, four steps. So theoretically, I don't really know exactly what this is tuned to, but we're going to bump this down four steps, pretending that it's tuned to E. Maybe the sample is uh, uh, something from Cymatics, and they've given you the uh, the tone of the sample, and you want to tune it to the uh, to C. So we brought it down negative four semitones right here from the Controls tab, brought it down to, from the trans, uh, Transpose right here, and we brought it down negative four. So, you know, if this were, uh, maybe it was an A note, we'd need to bring it up A sharp, B to C. So that would be plus three. You know, we wouldn't want to go down from A because that would be a really far, uh, you know, a long distance to, uh, you know, to pitch it down. And then, then the audio quality might start to degrade. So now we've got it routed to C theoretically, and uh, now we can write notes in whatever scale we want because we know that what it, when we draw an F right here, it's going to be at that tone. 
Uh, one last thing before we go, uh, if you want to hear the notes as you're drawing them in, you can click this audition button up here and you can hear them as you draw them in. If you don't have that on, when you draw notes in, you won't be able to hear them. So, all right guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.